Hey, yo, what's good, y'all? It's Stinger, and today I'm going to be showing each and every one of you how you can make some insanely dirty beats in the style of Homicide Gang and Wake Up Filthy. Now, I've been going to a lot of live concerts as of recently, and it's from going to those concerts that I realized that it is very important as a producer to know how to make songs that will get people hype and jumping. And I feel as though this beat is a perfect example of that. So to set aside the rambling, the beat that we're going to be going over today sounds a little something like this. Now the first thing that we're gonna go over is the melody, and the melody is stupid simple. The first thing that I threw down was this super gritty synth one shot, and I have it playing a pattern in the A sharp minor natural scale. Now if you've watched my recent tutorials, you'll know that a lot of my filthy or cardi or yeet type beats have included melodies that look very similar to this. I've been in love with this sort of half step arpeggiation as of recently, as it's just great for keeping a consistent energy within the track. And as always for my dark melodies, I suggest using these half step intervals in this scale. In any minor natural scale, there's going to be two half-step intervals, and in A-sharp minor, it's C and C-sharp, and F and F-sharp. Aside from those notes, I'll just use the root in the scale, and just vary it in the octaves. So this is what the first part of our melody sounds like. Now, as you may notice here, the melody strays away from that half-step arpeggiation. Now, I know this can't just be a me thing, but whenever I'm making a beat or a melody, sometimes an idea will just play in my head as if I'm hearing it in my head. And nine times out of ten, if I throw that in the beat, it like makes it ten times better. It's so weird. It's like your brain knows what's best for the beat. But yeah, anyway, I threw down this triplet, almost percussive roll, as it doesn't only just use the triplets, but as you can see here, it also used really short, cut off, like one six steps. So with that being said, this is what this portion of the melody sounds like in its entirety. The next thing that I threw down is this custom synth that I made in Serum that is included in my Zenith multi kit. And all I did for this was I copied our original melody and put it down by an octave. This creates an octave layer in the melody and makes it sound a whole lot more full and less thin. So this is what that sounds like. The next thing that I threw down is yet again hailing from my Zenith multi kit, and it's this synth with a ton of movement. And to add to the already existing movement in the Serum preset, I threw down Phase Mistress to amplify that movement. And all this is doing is playing the root note of the scale and the melody. And as you can see here, this is at A sharp 2, whereas our previous melody was at A sharp 3, and the one before that was at A sharp 4. So this is assisting in creating an even more layered melody. So this is what the synth sounds like. And the final portion of the melody that I threw down is a live guitar. Now, originally, I laid down the melody for this guitar on this Serum preset, but I didn't really like how it sounded in context with the beat, and it didn't really do anything to bring the overall energy up in the track. And that's exactly why I decided to use a live guitar. And the melody that it's playing is extremely simple. Yet again, I'm making use of these half-step intervals being F-sharp and F. And then from there, I just go up to the root being A-sharp. So this is what the pattern sounds like. And then from there, all I do is I throw it up by an octave by playing it on the high E string. And then once I had it recorded, I just threw down a bunch of effects, but the most notable being Fortin Nameless Suite. This is a fantastic guitar amp sim, and I have it on the Deathy McDeath Face preset. And introducing things like metal guitars is something that is going to bring the energy of a track through the roof. So with all of the effects applied to the guitar, this is what it sounds like. And now this is what everything in the melody sounds like all together. If you want to know how I mix my melodies, you can check out the video in the top 
right, whichever one is right. And in that video, I go into tremendous detail on how I mix my melodies. So now that we've got the melody out of the way, let's go into the drums. The first thing that I threw down was this super recognizable 808. And something to keep in mind when creating your melody is going to be the root note of your 808. Because the root note of this melody is so low, there's going to be a lot of rumble in the bass. If, for instance, the root note of your melody is like F sharp, you're going to have a much higher timbre and brighter sound in your 808s. So depending on what sound you want to achieve, you may want to adjust your root notes. Other than that, I have this playing a very simple pattern. And I also introduce an octave notes as well as these F sharps. And if you'll remember, the F sharps are a part of that half step interval that we use to create our guitar melody. So this is what the 808 sounds like. As for the mixing, I just have Fruity Fast Distortion on the A panel at about like 10%, and I just freaking boosted the highs into Valhalla. Now for the chorus of this beat, I actually have two different 808 patterns. The first 808 pattern that plays is the one that I just played for you now, and the second one is this much more energetic pattern. Introducing multiple 808 patterns is a great way to create some variation in your beats. And by having more variation, the artist may want to listen to the beat for a little bit longer. And from there, they might be able to develop a flow by listening to it for a longer period of time. And it just makes your beats a little bit more exciting. The rest of the drums are stupid simple, so I'm just going to go over it really quickly. The next thing that I threw down are two layered snares. The first is this snare with a lot of low and gritty properties. And the second is this snare with a lot of high and bright properties. After that, I threw down a counter snare playing a very basic pattern to create some bounce in the beat. After that, I threw down a basic two-step hi-hat. And finally, I threw down an open hat hitting on the downbeats. So with everything all together, this is what the drums sound like. tell pretty much every aspect of this beat is stupid simple and that is because with beats like this you don't really want to overcomplicate them and that's for two main reasons the first reason is that you want to create space for the artist which is kind of a given and the second reason is that so people have a consistent bounce and rhythm to attract that they can jump around to by throwing in some crazy polyrhythms and over the top snare patterns it can be kind of hard for somebody to grasp the overall bounce of the beat especially if it's their first time listening to it so yeah all that to say that is how you make a beat for homicide gang that would be crazy at a concert I thoroughly hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. If you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. And also feel free to check out my Patreon. I post the FLPs to all of my beats in all of my videos. So if you want to study the arrangement, the mixing, the mastering, the melody, all that kind of stuff, it's right at your fingertips. And finally, consider subscribing as I post one tutorial a week and two sound kits a month. Other than that, it's going to be it. Peace.